My name is Dan Bigelow, and I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Applied Economics at Oregon State University. Land use policy describes the rules, regulations, and guidelines established by governments at various levels to influence how land is used in a specific geographic area. Broadly speaking, land use policy aims to balance competing needs for land in order to promote economic growth, environmental sustainability, and other social goals. In the U.S., land use policy can emanate from a range of governmental entities, from local governments to the U.S. federal government. Historically, the regulation of land use in the U.S. has been left to local governments, mainly municipalities or cities, and counties. The main way that local governments regulate land use is through zoning. A zoning policy establishes a set of areas or zones throughout a city, for example, and within each zone, there are specific rules in place concerning how the land can be used. These rules cover things like the types of development allowed, such as residential housing, and the maximum allowable density of building construction if it is allowed. Zoning involves fairly rigid rules that basically dictate what can and can't be done with a particular piece of land. This isn't always the case, however. Some land use policies involve incentives and voluntary exchanges. An example is the Conservation Reserve Program, which is administered and run by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. This program targets landowners with environmentally sensitive cropland who receive an annual rental payment for enrolling their land in the program for a 10 to 15 year contract period. While in the program, the landowner agrees to implement some type of conservation cover practice, such as returning the land to native grasses or wetlands. At the end of the contract period, the landowner may be able to re-enroll in the program or they can return the land to its previous use producing crops. There are also cases where different levels of government work in concert to enact land use policy. A well-known example of this type of setup is found right here in Oregon. So in 1973, the Oregon State Legislature passed Senate Bill 100, a landmark bill that among other things required each individual city and town within the state to establish what's known as an urban growth boundary. Urban growth boundaries are essentially imaginary lines drawn around cities that determine where development over the next 20 years or so is allowed to take place. So here we have a state mandate and guidelines to create the urban growth boundary, but the exact lands that fall within an individual city's UGB is left solely to the discretion of local authorities. There is arguably no more fundamental way in which people interact with their environment than through land use. Land is an inherently scarce resource and that we aren't making any more of it unless we're talking about building islands in the sea or terraforming Mars. That makes the policies that shape and govern land use really important as they can have far reaching consequences on things like the environment through things like ecosystem service provision, economic development through things like home prices and other factors such as human health and social equity. This is all the more interesting because of how dramatically land use policy and its effectiveness and unintended consequences can vary from place to place.